This is our beginner guide for car photography with only one light setup. Hi guys, I'm Sean from Play by Post and today we're going to talk about car photography. Recently, we got a chance to have a car photography project with our best friend CKs. I believe we have seen him quite a few times before as he's one of our behind the scenes guy. He's also a very talented photographer and one of his expertise being car photography. Feel free to check out his work in the link below. In today's video, me and CK is going to give you some beginner guide on how to photograph a car with only one light source. I believe there isn't a lot of content about this before and I believe CK is going to give you some helpful tips to photograph your very first car photo shoots. First thing first, let's talk about the gear. CK's favorite focal length is between 50mm to 135mm because it gives a more compressed look and it gives a more separation between the subject and the background, lesser distortion and retain the true proportions of the car that's shooting. As for setup, he's using a one light sable, a tripod, wireless trigger or a remote trigger apps from your mobile devices, and lastly, don't forget about your car. First tips, always use a tripod and a remote trigger. In this case, CK is using the Sony A7R 3 and he is able to access the native app Imaging H to control his camera. The reason he is using the app to trigger his camera is to avoid any camera movements. This setup will speed up the whole work process and he will still get a sharp image even in a slow shutter speed. And of course, he can monitor his shots after he's done his light painting. This whole setup will definitely help him to speed up the work process and get a sharp image even he's using a slow shutter speed. Second tip, find the correct locations. We believe most of people who are watching this video are most likely do not have a big indoor setup for the shoots. And it's important to find the correct space in that case. When it comes to choosing a correct locations, it's advisable to choose a clean location with a darker ambience or surroundings. When we are shooting a long exposure, it may overexpose the ambience or surroundings, and sometimes it may affect the true color of the car, which can be tough to fix in post. So take note on that. Number three, as a beginner, don't choose a black car, especially at night time, as the color black is less sensitive to lights and create lesser reflections which means you're required to have a bigger resources or setups. Compared to a brighter car, you're able to lit up the car easier compared to a dark car. If for a dark car, you're required to have a bigger light source, multiple huge diffuser to properly lit up the car and show its curve. Number four, avoid shooting eye level. We are so used to look at subjects within our eye level. So it might be very boring or flattened if you are still doing the same way for car photography. And most of the time, photographing the car and the eye level doesn't show the car features, design or even the line. So, an easy fix to improve your photos is by just simply get low, kneel down and get the shots. CK personally prefer a low angle shot because it shows the feature of the car the best way. But depending on situation and editor needs, he will still go different angles for the purpose. Typically, a big production company will shoot their car in a bigger setup or crazier setup because they want to have a consistent result and of course, a faster workflow with clients. As this is a beginner guide, we're going to show you a more affordable way to create a bigger light source using single lights. What we are using right now is the Godox LC500. We call it as a light sable. This is kind of CK's go-to techniques to create a car photography, especially during nighttime. However, the cost of using this particular technique is inconsistent result and of course time consuming. You require to wait for 30 seconds for each result. But as a beginner guy or just first started off with car photography, I'm sure that you can treat it as a light painting, experiments of long exposure and I'm sure you can learn one or two things from here. Just have some fun. Number six, shape the subjects by playing the highlights and shadows. Instead of just light up a car entirely, you should always create a contrast to showcase the design and the curve of the car. Here are some tips for you. To find the best or most optimum way to light up a car, it requires a lot of trial and error by using the light stables. 
You just have to walk around the car, find different angles, see how the lights react and bounce off the car. Never give up, never be afraid and be patient. Next, the wow factors. It's important to wow your people from your shots. For example, if you're shooting a crappy, boring parking lot, try not to shoot in a way where it feels like parking lot. You can always get a better result or achieve a better result by just uh, trying different angles, um, through ways of light manipulating, dimming down the background, and of course, light paintings. Here's a fast before and after to show what little adjustment can improve your final shot. Next, finding the uniqueness of a car that you're shooting. Identify the uniqueness of a car and photograph those elements. For example, the Mazda CX-30 is well known for its S-curved design at the side of a car, so it's definitely worth highlights. And of course, don't forget about the interior of the car because it's as important as we present the driving experience visually. A quick tip to capture more details for interior, you should always use a higher apertures and of course sufficient lights so that you can get a very sharp image by the end of the day. Lastly, combine all the photos in post. It's impossible to create a perfect car photograph with just single image. So you're required to grab a few parcels and combine them into one. For you to do that, you're required to take more passes during the productions and plan ahead so that you have all these passes to manipulate or control during posts. So there you have it. We hope you like this beginner guide car photographies and I hope you learn one or two things from CKs. For those who never try car photography, I think this is a good chance to step out of comfort zone, give it a shot and use the tips that we have shared in this video. Hope you guys like this video. Remember to subscribe our channel and as always, create, learn and have fun. I'll see you guys in the next video.